Hello my sparkling stars, how are you all? Aprajita is back here with a new lesson from Archie's series by Heaven's Publishing House. Class 6th, chapter number 9. The chapter is Bruno Goes Exploring. So let's see how Bruno goes for exploring and where he explores and what he explores. First, these are the some pictures of some famous dictators in history. You have to just identify them, name them and write few lines about them. So this is all your homework, you have to find them who are these dictators. So moving ahead. This lesson is about a boy Bruno who was son of a German officer during Hitler's rule. Hitler was a dictator and when he took over Germany and he made, he uh, put all the Jews in the concentration camp. Then his family lived near a concentration camp. The concentration camps were going on a place where non-Germans were punished. Bruno decided to try exploring the place around his house. So around his house because his father was Hitler's German officer during Hitler's rule. He was a German officer so he had taken care, he had been shifted there and around his house the concentration camps were going on. Bruno just tried to explore them. Bruno thought about the people in the stripped pajamas outside his window. He usually saw those people who were roaming around in stripped pajamas and he just wondered who are they? So let's see how he explored them. Nothing changed for a quiet for quite a while at Outwith. They were shifted to Outwith. Bruno still had to put up with his sister Gretel being less than friendly to him whenever she was in a bad mood. He and his sister were in the house and they just when Gretel was in a bad mood, when his sister was in a bad mood, he has to face that also. So nothing changed when they shifted to Outwith. And he still wished that he could go back home to Berlin because they were staying previously, they were staying in Berlin and they had shifted to Outwith. Although the memories of that place were beginning to fade because it had been long, they had shifted to Outwith, so the memories of Berlin were, had started fading. The soldiers still came and went every day of the week holding meetings in father's office which was still out of bounds at all times and no exceptions. His father's office, uh, in his father's office the soldiers used to come and go but they were not allowed, it was out of their bounds, they were not allowed to go there. The children were not allowed to go there. The servants still came and washed things and swept things and cook things and clean things and served things, took things away and kept their mouths shut unless they were spoken to. Same thing happened here. The servants were there to do all the things. They used to do all household works, everything, but they didn't utter a single word until and unless they were asked something, they never spoke anything. But then things changed. Father decided it was time for the children to return to their studies. And although it seemed ridiculous to Bruno that school should take place when there were only two students to teach, both mother and father agreed that a tutor should come to the house every day and fill their mornings and afternoons with lessons. Now, Bruno and Gretel were there both brother sister were there and the parents thought now it's time they should start their studies. It has been long they have been in their homes and now they should start with their studies. So they decided to bring a 
personal tutor, to get a personal tutor who comes to the home and teaches them. A few mornings later, a man called Herr Liszt was a mystery to Bruno, although he was friendly enough, most of the time never raising his hand to him like his old teacher in Berlin had done. Something in his eyes made Bruno feel there was anger inside him, just waiting to get out. So a personal tutor was hired, his name was Herr Liszt. And, but he was a mystery to Bruno. He felt like something is in that person, some anger is there in that tutor which he wants to bring out of him. But that tutor never used to punish these children like his previous tutor. Herr Liszt was particularly fond of history and geography while Bruno preferred reading, reading and art. So his tutor was very fond of history and geography but Bruno was not. Bruno was interested in art. Those things are useless to you, Instead, insisted the teacher. So the teacher said, those arts, art and all is not worth. It is just waste, they are useless. A sound understanding of social sciences is far more important in these days and age. He said, the understanding of social sciences means history, geography, these are very important nowadays. But aren't books important? asked Bruno. Bruno asked to his teacher that aren't the books important which we read? Books about things that matter in the world of course. The teacher said, yes of course, the books which help you in uh, reading, in uh, knowing that what all is going around in the world, those are important. Explain her list. But not storybooks. No, the storybooks are not at all worth reading. Not books about things that never happened. The stories are fantasies. So the things which never happened are known as fantasies. So these fantasies never help you out in anything. So they are useless. How much do you know of your history anyway, young man? The teacher asks, do you know anything about the history? What all you have, what all is around you, do you know that? Well, I know I was born on April the 15th, 1934, said Bruno. So Bruno said that yes, in history I know this much only that I was born on this date. Not your own personal history, interrupted Herlis. The teacher said, no I am not talking about your personal history. I mean the history of who you are, where you come from, your family's heritage, the fatherland. Brown. Bruno frowned. Frown means he just stood like this. He wasn't entirely sure that father had any land because although the house in Berlin was large and comfortable, there wasn't very much garden space around it. So now Bruno thought that fatherland means the land which was owned by his father. And he was old enough to know that Outwith did not belong to them despite all the land there. So he was just thinking of this that the land which belongs to my father is fatherland. Not very much, he admitted finally. He said, no, I don't know about this much. Although I know quite a bit about Middle Ages. I like stories about knights and adventures and exploring. He said, no, I don't know about my fatherland uh, much, uh, but I know little about Middle Ages. Herr Liszt shook his head angrily. Then, this is what I am here to change. He said, this is what they are, I am here to change in you. He said in a sinister voice, he was very angry, to get your head out of your storybooks.
and teach you more about where you come from, about the great wrongs that have been done to you, where you come from, where do you belong to and what wrong has been done to you. I am here to teach you that. Bruno nodded and felt quite pleased as he assumed that he would finally be given an explanation for why they had all been forced to leave their comfortable house and come to this terrible place. Now Bruno was a bit happy that oh I will come to know that why we had to live Berlin and stay here in out with, with such these concentration camps and all going around where we are not allowed to go, why in such a place we have been shifted, which must have been the greatest wrong ever committed to him in his short life. Sitting alone in his room a few days later, Bruno started thinking about all the things he liked to do at home that he hadn't been able to do since he had come out, come to out with. So he was just sitting alone and he was thinking, I was so free to do everything in Berlin. I used to do this, I used to do that. But here since we had come to out with, I am not allowed to do anything. Most of them came about because he, was no, he no longer had any friends to play with. Here in out with, he had no friends to play with. But there was one thing that he was able to do on his own. He had done it all the time back in Berlin and that was exploring. Yes, here also he was, he said, he thought that yes, I can just explore. I cannot do anything else, I can explore things here also. When I was a child, Bruno said to himself, he is sitting alone, he is talking to himself, I used to enjoy exploring. I have never really done any exploring here. Perhaps it's a time to start. Now, Bruno thought, since I have come to out with, I have not done any exploring. Now I think this is the time, this is the right time to start exploring. Bruno jumped off his bed and rummaged in his wardrobe for an overcoat and an old pair of boots. The kind of clothes he thought a real explorer might wear and prepared to leave the house. Now he jumped off his bed, he rushed to his wardrobe and took out an overcoat and a pair of boots. He wore them because he thought an explorer dresses up like this only. For months now, Bruno had been looking out of his bedroom window at the garden and the bench with the plaque on it the tall fence and the wooden telegraph poles and all the other things he had written to grandmother about in his most recent letter. So for the months he, they had shifted to outwear, Bruno had been looking at all these things from his window only. He had not gone out yet. And as often as he had watched the people, all the different kinds of people, in their stripped pajamas. It had never really occurred to him to wonder what it was all about. He just sat on his window and he looked at those people who were roaming around in stripped pajamas. But he had never come to know who are they, what are they doing, why they are roaming here and there. It was as if it were another city entirely. The people all living and working together side by side with the house where he lived. Now he just stared from his window that uh, it seemed like that is an another city where these people are living and were they really so different and were they really so different? Yes, how come they are so different? Are they really so different from us? He wanted to know this. All the people in the camp wore the same clothes, those pajamas and their stripped cloth cap too. And all the people who wandered through this house wore uniform with bright red and black armbands 
and carried guns and always looked terribly stern as if it were all very important really and no one should think otherwise. Now, he said that the people living out on the other side of his house, they all wore the same clothes, same type of clothes, the pajamas and the stripped uh, cap. But the people who came to meet them, they were dressed in uniforms and bright red and black armbands and they carried gun. Always they had a gun with them. So he just wondered who are they? What exactly was the difference? What was the difference between these two people? Two types of people were there. He wondered to himself and who decided which people wore the stripped pajamas and which people wore the uniforms. Now he had these questions in his mind that who has decided that uh, these few people will wear these pajamas and few people will wear this uniform. Who has decided this? Of course sometimes the two groups mixed. He had often seen the people from his side of the fence on the other side and it was clear that they were in charge. So sometimes he has seen that these two people they mixed up but the people who went from his side, the side where this, his house was, the people who went from this side to that side, they were in charge. The pajama people all jumped to attention whenever the soldiers approached and sometimes they fell to the ground and sometimes they didn't even get up and had to be carried away instead. Now he said that the people who used to go in uniforms, they were in charge, they, he felt that. And the pajama people just when they saw those uniform people, they just jumped up and some uh, people what they did, they fell to the ground. They fell to the ground and sometimes they never got up. They had to be carried away. It's funny that I have never wondered about those people. Bruno thought, Bruno thought I have never ever uh, thought of those people, why they behave like this. And it's funny that when you think of all the times the soldiers go there and he had even seen father go over there on many occasions that none of the stripped pajama people had ever been invited back to the house. His, he thinks that my father has very often, I have seen him going that side where the stripped uh, pajama people live, people live. But I have never seen those people coming this side to my house. Leaving the house, Bruno went round the back and looked up towards his own bedroom window. When he left the house, he went round back to his house and looked up to his bedroom window. He looked as far to his right as he could see and the tall fence seemed to carry on in the sunlight and he was glad that it did because it meant that he didn't know what was up ahead and he could walk and find out. And that was what exploration was all about after all. Now when he saw to the right, he saw tall fence, long tall fence. It was going long ahead. He didn't knew till where. So he th thought, oh it's good that it's going long ahead. Because this is the exploration. I'll, I'll have a chance to go along with this fence. This is the exploration. Before heading off in that direction though, there was one final thing to investigate and that was the bench. There was a bench and he said first I should explore this before going that side. All these months he had been looking at it and staring at the plaque from a distance and calling it the bench with the plaque. But he still had no idea what it said. Something was written on that bench. Looking left and right to make sure that no one was coming, he ran over to it 
He ran near the bench and squinted as he read the words. When you uh, read something from very near, you squint yourself, your eyes get like this and he started reading it. It was only a small bronze plaque and Bruno read it quietly to himself, quietly read himself, presented on the occasion of the opening of, he stopped there, he hesitated. Out with camp, he continued, stumbling over the name as usual, June 1940. He reached out and touched it for a moment. He was very curious. He went there and touched that flag. And the bronze was very cold. So he pulled his fingers away before taking a deep breath and beginning his journey. He just touched that flag and it was very cold. So he put off his fingers and he took a deep breath and he started his journey. He started his journey of exploration. The one thing Bruno tried not to think about was that he had been told on countless occasions by both mother and father that he was not allowed to walk in this direction. In the direction which Bruno was going, his parents has all, had always told him not to go there. Many a times he had been told that anywhere near the fence, that he was not allowed anywhere near the fence or the camp and most particularly that exploration was banned at out with, with no exceptions. The exploration on which Bruno wanted to go, that was banned for everyone. Nobody was allowed to go in the concentration camps where those pajama people used to live. Bruno was not at all allowed to go in that direction. Now, what do we learn from this lesson? All human beings are brothers and sisters and members of one and the same family and they are beloved children of the same God. Everybody, all human beings are brothers and sisters and they are the children of one God. Nobody should be discriminated on the grounds of religion, color or any region. The discrimination should never be there that this this particular people will do this kind of thing, this particular people uh, will are not allowed to go there, this is discrimination should never be there. The path of peace and non-violence should be adopted rather the murder, violence and conflicts. Non-violence is the best thing and it brings love and peace to the human beings. We should always live, we should always follow non-violence because these uh, violence, conflicts, murders, they, they never bring peace in any country in the world. They never bring peace. They just give hatred. They just develop hatred in the people. Now, moving ahead. Let's see what's there in these exercises. How old was we have to take the correct answer. How old was Bruno during World War II? World War II, Bruno was nine years old. Bruno was nine years old. What was the name of children's teacher? The teacher which were, who was hired for Bruno and his sister, name was her list. What did Bruno prefer to read? Bruno never loved to read history or geography. He preferred to read arts. Who was a mystery to Bruno? Obviously his teacher was a mystery to him. Fill in the blanks. 
Bruno was a which type of boy? He was a young boy. He was forbidden to go to the where was he forbidden to go? To the other side of the house. other side of the house. Bruno's father was a high ranking official. He was a German official. He was working under Hitler, so he was a German official. The new house is, what was the new house? Where was it? Out with. The dash is going on during the lesson. During this lesson, we were reading this lesson, what was going on? The war was going on. The war is going on during this lesson. Now, coming to true false. Herr means sir in German. In German, Herr is called sir. Yes, this is true. Bruno was very happy in Outwit. Was Bruno happy in Outwit? No, he was not at all happy because he wanted to go back to Berlin. False. Bruno thought that the great wrongs his teachers spoke about were the historical wrongs done to Germans. Is it true or false? Spots. Bruno disliked reading about the Middle Ages. He disliked reading about the Middle Ages? No. He liked Middle Ages. He liked Middle Ages, ages reading. So this is false. He liked it. He didn't dislike it. The story is set against the backdrop of World War II. Yes, it's about World War II. Against the backdrop of World War II. This is true. So now moving ahead. Answer the following question. How did Bruno's life in Berlin different compared to life in Outwit? How was it different? In Berlin, he was free to do whatever he wanted. He was free to move anywhere he wanted to go. But in Outwit, he was restricted. He had no friends in Outwit. In Outwit, he was restricted to move from his house. He was restricted to go on the other side of his house. There were so many restrictions there. He just had to stay inside his house. How did Bruno prepare himself for exploration? So, do you remember how he prepared himself? He just jumped out of his bed and ran towards his wardrobe, took out a long overcoat, took out an overcoat and pair of boots and he wore them and he got ready to explore. What do you think the two groups of people really were? Who do you think? One group was the Jews who were made, who were arrested after the World War II. During the World War II they were arrested and when Hitler took over Germany, they were arrested and they were made prisoners there. And the next group, the other group, was the, were the German officials who used to go 
and rule over them. He used to like be very cruel with them, with the prisoners. So these were the two groups there. How did the people on the other side behave in the presence of the people from his side? Now, when the officials used to go there, how did the prisoners behave? They just got down on their feet. They just jumped in, the, in an attention position. Some prisoners were in attention position. Some prisoners used to get, get down on their feet and some never got up. They had to be carried away somewhere. Just made then and there they were dead. So they had to be carried away. Because the officials, the German officials, they were so cruel to them. The next question, what had been inscribed in the room? What do you think it actually means? The inscription said, presented, the bronze inscription was there and it said, the inscription was presented on the occasion of the opening of Outwith Camp, 1940. And actually meant that this was presented, this was the, on the starting, this was the starting of the camp, the concentration camp of the Jews, when the Nazis, that they defeated and they made them the prisoners, made the Jews the prisoners there and they put them in the concentration camp. So it was the, it was showing the opening of that concentration camp. What did Bruno try not to think about as he began his journey? Why? When he started his journey to explore things, he just didn't want to think about that his parents had on many occasions told him not to go. He was restricted to go near that fence or near the concentration camp. So he, before his journey, he just wanted to forget that. He just wanted, he didn't want to recall all those things. Because he just wanted to explore, go, he wanted to go on his exploration. So yes, children, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. You got to know many things about history too. And many things about how the discrimination among people had been done or they have been done which has which is not to be done which is to be stopped so stay with me for the next coming up lesson an interesting one i'll be back with something new thank you bye bye